Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Welcome to my twin flame vlog, my twin flame story week by week or month by month. This is episode number 36. My name is Michelle Fonten. I'm the author of Twin Flame Romance, The Journey to Unconditional Love. I'm also the author of Twin Flame Union, The Seven Keys to a Healthy Twin Flame Journey. And my brand new book, the Empowered Divine Feminine, Becoming an Unstoppable Woman in the 21st Century and Beyond. All of my books are available in paperback, Kindle, and Audible books. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Thank you for subscribing below. Click on the bell, scroll up to all for all notifications. And thank you for giving the video a thumbs up. Okay, I need to say what the topic of this video is. It has been eating at me for the last 24 hours. And the topic of this Twin Flame story vlog is addressing the elephant on Netflix. Now, if you are new to my channel, I wanna welcome you here. And I want to tell you that I am all for the truth. I will tell the truth. I will be as authentic as possible. I will tell the truth about Twin Flames that are on this journey who I encounter on a day-to-day -day basis and whom I coach, and then let you decide. <laughs> I really feel very compelled to talk about this. I've been staying quiet about this since a Vanity Fair article came out a couple of years ago and I elected to stay quiet, but I cannot stay quiet anymore about this. I've got my Grogu tumbler here, Per usual, I've got some Vada tea that I homemade today for me, and it's very good. It tastes very cinnamony. Mmm, that is hot, hot, hot. But I needed to address the elephant on Netflix after I received a couple of text messages from family members and friends. And I was like, this can't be happening. But in a way, I feel like it's good that this is happening. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, there is a new docu-series on Netflix about twin flames, but it's about a particular twin flame couple who are cult leaders. And we're gonna like dig deep into this and go, are they really cult leaders? Is this really what's going on? And again, it's something I've known about, God, I've known about this couple and the, the cult since 2019, since early 2019. So let me tell you why. So I had one session with a Twin Flame YouTuber coach in January of 2019. I was brand new on the journey. I found out I was a Twin Flame in December of 2018. It felt real, true. And if you've watched the 14 signs video, you know my story and my signs are authentic and real. This stuff really happened. And everything I speak about on my channel are things that have happened to me on the Twin Flame journey without consulting anybody. <laughs> so these are actual things that have happened. And if I talk about other things that have happened, they've happened to clients of mine that have coached throughout this journey. So nothing is fabricated, everything is real. And I try to keep it as real as possible. So in January of 2019, I received one singular coaching session from a person who is on YouTube, who is a Twin Flame coach, and who was a disciple of this couple that is documented on Netflix. And I believe he branched away pretty soon after being their disciple, but one of the reasons I know he was a disciple was because he spoke about them in our only session, he recommended that I buy their book in the only session, and he recommended that I buy this other book by Elizabeth Clare Prophet, who was a cult leader. So if any of you have seen a book on Amazon called Twin Flames and Soulmates by Elizabeth Clare Prophet, know that this person who deceased in 2009 was a cult leader. I believe that maybe this couple that's being documented on Netflix is a reincarnation of this couple that were cult leaders. Um, they were cult leaders throughout the 70s and 80s and into well into the 90s, but like one died and then the other got old and one of the daughters took over, but another daughter wrote a book about being raised in this cult. 
So if you see that book by Elizabeth or any book by Elizabeth Clare Prophet, please do steer clear of those books. She was a bona fide cult leader. So just to give you um, an example, in 1986, Prophet relocated her headquarters and 750 staff to the Forbes Ranch. I think it was in Montana, I want to say. So it was this mountain setting that was the backdrop for her more dire prophecies and the building of bomb shelters to survive a possible nuclear war. But it wasn't that. Like, if you read her story, she said she was a prophet from God and she knew the exact date of the nuclear war and she made her followers sell all of their belongings, go live on this ranch and buy all these arms and create a bomb shelter. So they had tons and tons of weapons and arms in this cult. Like it was totally insane. But when I was reading this book after that one coaching session in January of 2019, something didn't feel right. I didn't know anything about her backstory, but something kept not feeling right as I was reading this book. And I looked up her life story, found out she was a cult leader. Actually, I threw the book across the room as I was reading it because I knew it wasn't right. But it wasn't until like after that, I was like, I need to find out who this person was because this just doesn't, something sounds really creepy about this. And that's Elizabeth Clare Prophet. So not the first time that someone speaking up on behalf of Twin Flames has become the leader of a cult but let me just put your mind at ease so you don't think like everything Twin Flame is evil. Any time there is vulnerability, any time there is opening for anything metaphysical, whether it's religious or new agey, that opens up the ego potential for abuse of power. So this has been done many thousands of times throughout humanity. And another example is the founder of Bikram Yoga. As you may have heard, yoga is not bad, right? I know many of you probably take yoga. Yoga is not bad in and of itself, but many people use the format of yoga to abuse others or suck them into a cult. So the founder of Bikram Yoga was found to have sexually assaulted and abused many, many, many of his yoga teachers throughout the years. And that's not the only one. Maharishi Maharishi Yogi, who founded the Transcendental Meditation Movement, was conducting a pyramid scheme and really got hungry with power, even though the message was good, even though meditation's great and transcendental meditation's great. So anytime a human being becomes drunk with power, that opens up for cult-like behavior and abuse. And that can happen to anybody who is not in check with their ego and moral parameters. So it doesn't have anything to do with twin flames. So if you're watching this now and you're afraid because you're a twin flame, and now you're afraid of how your family is going to react or your friends are going to react or your colleagues are going to react, or even your twin flame is going to react, just know that if you're living in your authentic truth and you're checking in with yourself and you're trying to do the best that you can, it's not bad. It's not bad to be a twin flame. There are people that have distorted the notion of twin flames, what it is and how you get into union with your twin flame. And that's why I always teach and preach on my YouTube channel that A, I have no authority to tell you whether or not you're a twin flame or whether or not the person you met is your twin flame. And two, nobody can tell you exactly how to get into union with your twin flame. Nobody, not me, not anybody. So that has to come from your internal spiritual journey. And to that end, before we dive into this thing, I need to tell you that for years on my channel, I have urged you not to really reveal or talk to others about twin flames who aren't really ready to hear it just because a lot of people, when they start talking about twin flames, the, the surrounding people think they're crazy or they're exaggerating or it's not true. And I've always shied away from either explaining it to others that are outside of the twin flame circle or shying away from really getting into deep conversations about it with friends or family members. 
And the other day I was kind of put on the spot and I'm gonna talk about this in a video that I'm posting this week. I was supposed to post it today, but instead I really needed to get this vlog out to you because I felt it was of utmost importance. I found that because I hadn't prepared myself to really define Twin Flames or talk about Twin Flames in an articulate way to someone who is not a Twin Flame, that I was stumbling over my words and I sounded like unsure of myself. And I'm very sure of myself in my journey. So I felt like, okay, I really need a template, a dialogue to be able to adequately explain it to non-Twin Flames. And I'm gonna give you that template that you can kind of explore and go through so that this doesn't have to remain in the shadows because that's not fair to you. It's not fair to your journey. It's not fair to Twin Flames and it's not fair to true authentic Twin Flames who are experiencing this. Because now that this docu-series is out on Netflix, the problem is there's going to be a lot, and there already is, a lot of negative connotations surrounding Twin Flames. And we don't want it to be shrouded in shame and darkness and scam. We don't want it to be like that because it's not something that we necessarily asked for. It's just part of our experience. So. I'm going to give you that template this week, never fear. And it's up to you to be discerning as to when and how you might want to share that with family and friends. In order to kind of go through and explain my feelings and reactions to this docuseries. And again, I, um, I did not want to watch it. And I've only watched like 40 minutes of the first episode. I did not want to watch it, but I knew if I was going to speak about it today in a vlog that I absolutely positively needed to watch some of it just to have a view of what this is talking about, even though I knew that this couple in particular has been taking advantage of people through this pyramid scheme and scare tactics for years now. So to that end, I looked up and I'm going to post some of these things in the info box below. Because I really, as a vulnerable person on a spiritual journey, I want you to be well aware of the traits of a cult leader and the tactics a cult uses to get you into a cult. I really want you to be educated. Be educated on this so that you do not fall into a trap with someone who is misleading you. The traits of a cult leader, and this is just a few, but one trait is a charismatic personality. And we're gonna go over these more as I talk about a little bit of the docuseries. Expects obedience, humiliates others, sense of entitlement, takes sexual advantage of group members, uses enforcers to ensure compliance and magical powers. Okay, so those are the traits of a cult leader. For the first 30 minutes of footage that I saw on this docu-series, there are several videos of this couple that are portrayed in the docu-series, educating and teaching their disciples, if you will. And the first thing that I did notice was the charismatic personality. That is the first thing that is so apparent is this charismatic personality. It's the male versus the female that has the more charismatic personality. And that was apparent from the very first video clip. Okay. So that is already done. That is how they are attracting people in is both of their charismatic personalities, but notably the man has a greater charismatic personality than the woman. Now, second of all, Part of this tactic, I believe, is that most of the followers are women, just like most of the followers on my channel are women. But if there is a twin flame divine feminine, for example, who is really dying to be in union with a male counterpart, then of course, following a charismatic leader, male, who is in union with their divine feminine counterpart, then that would stand to reason that he would have the extra charisma because he also has that role that the followers are desiring. So the second is expects obedience. In the 40 minutes that I watched, you can visually see and you can hear the turner of phrases that the male leader uses 
to dominate and control and manipulate. The words that he uses are very, very manipulative and they are leading. They're leading to almost not give the follower a choice. And that was super fascinating to watch because it was really apparent. And I'm sure if you're in a vulnerable state, you're not necessarily going to notice that, but it was on par. It was super specific. Um, one thing I noticed is that they gave like all cult leaders, I'm sure they gave like just enough of the truth to hook the followers into believing them. So there was like truth about twin flames. There's truth about twin flames that I talk about on my channel. So they led with just enough truth to make, to make it make sense to those that were listening. So it's like just enough truth. And then the puppet master mastering or the puppeteering starts the manipulation and the control starts right after that, right after revealing a truth, it's like the manipulation and control. Like they are now the puppet masters of these followers. And that was super apparent too. And it's interesting because you would think that it would be like, oh, the docu-shares wanted to make you see this and wanted to make you believe that. No, I am super disappointed that this is on Netflix, to be honest with you, because I feel that 40 minutes into the first episode, that it almost glorifies them. I feel like it's almost like celebrating them in a way. I really felt like the footage they chose, the way they were talking about it, was almost like it's giving them free marketing and maybe they're getting paid for this docu-series. I don't know, but it's certainly gonna boost like their book sales. It's gonna boost their channel. It's gonna boost their coaching. Like I almost felt like it was putting them in too bright of a light, even though you could see the manipulative tactics on screen. The second expects obedience that was really apparent. And it, it was apparent through the control. The way they presented the material is that like you want to be with your twin flame, don't you? So if you want to be with your, you want to be with your divine love. So if you want to, you have to follow all the steps that we tell you, you have to follow. So that obedience that like you have no other choice. If you want this outcome, you have no other choice. And in fact, the person representing the document docu-series, I guess it was maybe the one who was doing all the research stated that prior to their main twin flame cult stuff, um, the man in the relationship had had a website on like healing cancer and that in his website, like you had to pay a certain amount and he knew exactly what you needed to do to, to heal cancer. And you had to follow his steps. Exactly. Like that's what was on the website. Um, and that really leads to like a sense of entitlement. And I call it like the God complex that these people felt that they were God or they were like directly chosen by God to do this. And that's also what Elizabeth Clare Prophet and her husband said as well in that cult was like, they were specifically chosen by God as twin flames to do this. So like the sense of entitlement is I was chosen by God to do this so that you have to obey what I'm saying. Cause I'm right. And then humiliates others is the other one in the docu series. There's this, um, there are two sisters that one, was a very um, obedient twin flame who obediently asked her twin flame to be with her and they got married after like two months. But she roped her young, young sister into it. Her sister was like 18 years old at the time. And during one of the sessions, you see the male counterpart humiliating the younger sister, who is now 19 apparently, in the docu-series, of course, right? In the video, she's now 19, but um, he ropes her into it. And in front of like 50 people, he's saying, yeah, we manifested. Oh, that was another thing they said. The God complex in the sense of entitlement was like, um, we are the only ones on earth that can call in your twin flame. 
um, you know, God gave us that special power to call in your twin flame. So I guess that would go with magical powers too. <laughs> and so they told this person, the sister, the younger sister, like we are going to do this ritual to call in your twin flame. And within two days, you're anybody who contacts you as a man, that's your twin flame. And they confronted her in front of the 50 people and were like grilling her. Like, who did you meet? Who did you meet? She's like, I don't think I met anyone. Like, who did you talk to? Who did you talk to? Did anyone reach out to you? And so they were like grilling her and humiliating, humiliating her in front of the group in order to make her choose somebody and give an answer and say, okay, this person did reach out to me. And they're like, okay, that's your twin flame. So they used humil like humiliation to try to get her to comply. They take sexual advantage of group members. I don't know, I haven't gotten that far in the docuseries yet, so I don't know, but of course, you know, many cult leaders do that, right? And um, the leader of Bikram Yoga, the founder rather of Bikram Yoga was, you know, a classic example of someone who did that. Um, uses enforcers to ensure compliance. So. One thing that was mentioned is that this is a pyramid scheme as well as a cult. So basically this couple trains others couples to become like master coaches and then the master coaches train other coaches or maybe they train other coaches that are underneath them and everybody has to obey like a script or everybody has to obey certain things. So the one woman who got married after two months um, said that the couple in question started a GoFundMe campaign to help them start their new life, but that they dictated to them exactly how they could use the money. They said down to the very last penny. So it was like ultimate control, compliance. You have to do exactly as we say, we're gonna make sure that this is exactly how you are using this money. So I think that they fulfilled all of the traits of a cult leader. What do I have to say about that? I find it very scary. <laughs> I find it very scary that there are so many people that were under their rule, if you will. Um, I think at one point they had like 38,000 members on Facebook or in their private coaching. Um, that's a lot of people. and. I know they started their coaching program way, not well before, but I think it was something like December of 2018. So I was just finding out I was a twin flame at that point. I didn't even know them. I didn't know what was going on. It wasn't really till January that I had that one coaching session with a person who was a follower, an initial follower of them that I knew who they were, but I did not know prior to that who they were. Let's go ahead and talk about like tactics that people do to get you into a cult because again, with your vulnerability, and this is just smart, this is for anybody, right? You could have a sister, brother, best friend, or one of your children, right? Getting sucked into these things online and not really knowing what they're getting themselves into. Tactics to get, and this is from Oprah Winfrey's website. Um, I took from a couple different sources, which I'll put the sources down as well, but uh, Oprah Winfrey also posted something, and this is a while back, I don't even think this is recent. So one of the things is hiding their true intent. So it was really interesting. The way they represented it is that not only do you get to be with your twin flame, but if you become a coach, you're gonna be a millionaire or something, or you're gonna like make six figures. So there was definitely this like hidden agenda about being with your twin flame, but also making a lot of money. So that it was kind of like a weird, thing like are you spiritual are you from god or is this a pyramid scheme and you're really just interested in making a lot of money um i don't know the vanity fair article also like showed this couple as having this like amethyst crystal that was worth like a million dollars or something i don't know how much it was worth but it was something like that maybe a couple hundred thousand dollars and then at the beginning of this series it shows him showing off like a hundred thousand dollar porsche so yeah um, instilling fear, I definitely saw that in the docuseries for the first 40 minutes was, well, you don't want to be with your twin flame? What do you mean you don't want to be with your twin flame? You don't want to be with your divine love? You're telling us you want to be? Then you have to follow exactly as we say. So just instilling that fear. Um, speaking to people's emotions, that was absolutely, positively, definitely something they were doing. 
They manipulate a person and deprive them of sleep. I'm just taking a few, right? There are a lot of them, but um, one of the persons that is represented is a, is a sister and she has a twin sister who got caught up in this organization and who also cut off ties with her family. But one of the things she said was at her wedding, her sister was on coaching calls like all night long with this couple. And so it was like at all hours of the day, at all hours of the night, it was kind of like this obsessive thing where she was always plugged into this. Um, so not really sleeping much. They practice financial exploitation, manipulation, or dependence. Um, yeah, I mean, having that couple that got married after two months and having the lead cult leaders doing a GoFundMe campaign and then dictating how those funds are used, financial dependence, right? Information control. Um, they practice deception by deliberately withholding or distorting information or lying. Um, I, you know, I thought this was pretty fascinating because they were just saying, if you follow all of the steps of what we teach in our coaching program, you are guaranteed at 100% to be with your twin flame in harmonious union. So here's the thing, that's lying and distortion because no one can guarantee that. Not a single living soul on earth can guarantee that. And so by them exaggerating claims or saying or distorting the truth or lying by saying, you do everything we say and we can guarantee at 100% you'll be in harmonious union with your twin flame. That was like misinformation. So thought control, they require members to internalize the group's doctrine as truth, black and white or good versus evil thinking. Yeah, you know, I saw that when they said, we are your family, we are your soul family, we are the only ones that care about you. And they said something about like energy leaks to people that are in your environment that don't believe in twin flames or that are your family. And you need to close those energy leaks or you will not be with your twin flame. And so they made people write letters to their family stating that um, they wouldn't have contact with them anymore, which I found like, okay, that felt like Twilight Zone. <laughs> do, 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 do. They, you know, this is thought control. Okay, this is like super interesting. They employ hypnotic techniques to alter mental states, undermine critical thinking, and age regress the member. So I believe wholeheartedly in meditation as you know. However, meditation and group dynamic can be used to manipulate and control people through like hypnosis or if they're in a really vulnerable state, you can make suggestive things, suggestions, I guess. And it does look like that in this group dynamic, of this cult, that that's exactly what they did. So I wanna go back to the example of the 19 year old who said, I didn't really meet anyone. And they're like, no, 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 we did this process. And apparently everybody put her, their hands on her and they were chanting and going into this deep meditative state and that the leaders were the only ones with the authority to call in her twin flame. And they were almost like leading her to believe that they did that. And so when she said, well, well there, there was this one person who reached out to me, but I thought it was kind of weird. And um, she even mentioned in the docu-series that she felt this guy was kind of creepy. And then the leader of the cult was like, no, 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 that is your twin flame. And so it was like, they used that process of like laying on hands and chanting and the cult leaders were the only ones that could call in this person's twin flame. And they were using that as a mind control technique to get her to select someone. Whether or not it was her twin flame, right? Probably not. But just to get her to select someone, again, the control, the manipulation, the puppeteering. I would just say to you, those are just a few, but um, be careful out there in the world. 
and there are a lot of people with poor intent and not just this couple in question. I have seen several others who also have poor intent around this, but you've got to remember that this couple as the cult leader have many disciples that are doing the exact same thing and have YouTube channels and have coaching programs and they are direct disciples of these two people. And they've been trained by them and they've been trained with what to say. So just be super careful out there. And what do I want to say then about twin flames? <laughs> oh boy. You know, as someone who practices many spiritual practices, such as, you know, meditation, yoga, Ayurveda, tarot, astrology, it is given a bad name a lot. And it's given a bad name a lot because there are people out there who do take advantage of other people, unfortunately. And that does happen in every area of life. But what is the most vulnerable space? The most vulnerable space is your soul, your spirit, right? Your heart. And just like those classic psychics, which again, I didn't even know this existed till like five years ago, but the classic example of like psychics in psychic shops where you would go to them and, you know, they ask you for 50 bucks to get your fortune told. And then 20 minutes later, they're telling you, you have a curse on you and that they need $1,500 cash to get rid of that curse. And if you don't do it, you're going to be doomed for life. And that has been going on for generations, right? Not just this one. Just like there's been that going on that gives psychics a bad name or tarot readers a bad name. Organizations that give yoga a bad name, meditation a bad name, or whatever, right? Astrology a bad name, and now Twin Flames a bit bad name. So just know that it's not the thing itself that is bad. Tarot itself is not bad. Yoga itself is not bad. Meditation itself is not bad. Twin flames itself is not bad. And I just want to hit home with that. I want to hit home so hard that you are not a bad person for experiencing what you're experiencing on the twin flame journey. You're not bad as a person for having chosen the twin flame journey as part of your journey. Your soul just chose it. It's just a spiritual experience, you guys. It's not like there's something wrong with you. I want you to know that everything that you've experienced up until present is a part of your experience and it's not bad. It's what you do with it that makes it bad or good. So if you choose to make yourself a better person, if you choose to love more, if you choose to take the higher road, and be authentic and truthful, then that means you're doing something good with it, right? If you choose to deceive, manipulate, control others, or be greedy, that's when you're choosing to do something wrong with it. So again, you get to choose, but the experience itself does not make it bad, okay? So I just wanted to hit hard home with that, guys, because when I first saw that Vanity Fair article back in, I don't know what it was, 2020 or 2021. I can't remember when it came out, but oh my God, I had the biggest pit in my stomach because I was like, oh, holy crap, here it goes. <laughs> here it goes. You know, everything that I've been talking about and trying to be as authentic and truthful as possible, here it goes. The mainstream media is just like going to see something extremely negative about this. And then now here we go again. So... Yeah, twin flames in themselves are not bad. There are a few bad apples in the barrel. And again, it's what you do with your journey, what you do with your information. It's what you do with your life that makes all the difference. So I wanna thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for subscribing to my channel below. Click on the bell, scroll up to all for all notifications. And thank you for giving the video a thumbs up. Thank you for sharing this video with others who could need some help on the twin flame journey or those who are not twin flames who want to hear a little bit more about twin flames and my take on this whole thing and i wish you all the best of luck 
Have a wonderful Thanksgiving week if you're watching this during Thanksgiving, and I'll see you soon in my next video. Bye.